the lawnmower, the dog sledge. But is beauty in the eye of the beholder? We'll find out in just a minute. And greetings everybody and welcome to another Jester Reviews and today uh, I hope to bring you the Zindi Primate Ateleth, Ateleth, I think it's Ateleth, Ateleth Dreadnought Cruiser T6. This uh, ship featured uh, recently in, uh, in the UK because we've been doing reruns of uh, uh, Enterprise and uh, I actually just uh, saw it just this week actually uh, we're just in that little bit where the Zindi defeat the Sphere Builders and uh, there it was in all its glory uh, now yes um, lots of people are not very keen on the design of this ship yeah the dog sledge I've heard that the lawnmower <laughs> I even heard that as well um, but, you know, I believe that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I have to say, um, I do quite like the look of this ship. Now, most people buy this ship uh, for the trait. And we will go into that uh, in a little while. But, um, yeah, but while the trait has, has always interested me... Um, the ship has also interested me, just like all the other Zindi ships. So, what we'll do, we'll take a look at all of them as well. Right, so without further ado, let's have a quick look at the build. So, here is the build. Uh, this is a typical uh, broadside type of cruiser with four weapons to the front and four weapons to the rear. Uh, I'm not going to try and labour too much on the point because um, I'm very much aware that we do waste quite a lot of time when I'm going to this the, these type of builds. So I'll just skip over and uh, show you what we've how I've set this ship up. Um, I've got three spiderwave disruptor dual beam banks on the front, and I've got the disruptor wide angle dual heavy beam bank, uh, which is part of a three piece set uh, with the. Uh, Locus Custom Fire Control. Actually, I don't have the third piece set. Oh, I do. There it is. Sorry. I eat my words. Uh, yes, it, the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo. So it's part of a three piece set. And you get this uh, little 2% bonus all damage, which is quite uh, valuable. Uh, on the rear, we have the Terran Task Force Disruptor Beam Array, which is, uh, you, you can acquire that through your reputations, through the Terran Reputations tab. Uh, I've got the Kinetic Cutting Beam, which is also given us another 2% bonus all damage. And finally, the House of Martok Disruptor. Okay, sorry about that. I had to do a little bit of editing there because I just realised that um, I had the wrong devices in my device slots. Um, so uh, I'm happy now that I've got the right ones where I want them. Uh, so in this first slot, we have a battery en energy amplifier, gives a 20% bonus energy weapon damage. I have the reactive armor catalyst, which I'll come back to in just a minute. And we have the red matter capacitor, which is just, uh, yeah, just a battery really, but it uh, gives plus 25 all power levels for 20 seconds. And a weapons battery large. Um, plus 100 weapons power setting for 10 seconds. Um, now this little doohickey, the reactive armor catalyst, is a really good piece of kit. And if you're actually being um, attacked and bombarded from all sides, and you know you're in the middle of, uh, well, let's have a look, shall we? Um, is it this one? Where is it? There it is. Yes, uh, Zincathi Front Advance. Now this is. Uh, um, a TFO which um, 
you go into battle and you have to blow up some uh, Zincathy bases. And I don't know about you, but every time I get to those bases and I'm going to offload my bomb, um, you can bombard from all sides. And as soon as you set it going, it starts again and you get bombed again and you start again and you can be there for ages. Well, what this little doohickey does is when you activate it, it actually soaks up hit points over 10 seconds which is more than enough so you activate this before say you drop your bomb in the Zenkathy uh, front TFO so you activate this before you drop your bomb and then you will absorb all those hit points to give you enough time for your bomb to detonate now I've used it a few times and it's been really really cool in that respect um, so yeah uh, where do you get this from now this is from uh, the Iconium War. Where is it? Broken Circle. Um, it's a really, really good piece of kit. You can actually get uh, something else as well from here, which I got. I'll just try and find it for you. I got. What was it I got? Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, I got the Delta Alliance reinforcements as well. So I played it twice and I got the Reactive Arm Catalyst pack and the Delta Alliance reinforcements. But you can place as, as many times as you want. Um, let's see what you can get in Broken Circle. There you go. But the project may take more time to complete than we have left. Okay, thank you. Oh my god, didn't it go on? Anyway, the Antichron Sun Infused Tetrion uh, Full Automatic Rifle, uh, Reactive Armor Catalyst Pack, there you go, Universal Kit Module, Jam Subspace Transmissions, uh, Delta Alliance Reinforcements Beacon, uh, uh, Cannon Console, Cannon Weapon Damage 20%. Our uh, current lockbox. So I actually picked the Delta Alliance Reinforcements Beacon and the Reactive Armor Catalyst Pack. Now once you actually open this, you'll get five um, catalysts, and that will enable you once you open that to craft them yourself. So if you go into the R and D, where is it? There we go. So once you open that pack, you'll be able to craft them yourself, just like a weapons battery. So, um, really, really cool piece of kit. So once you once you play that TFO, um, not TFO actually, the episode. Once you play that episode, and you pick up that pack, you'll be able to craft it yourself. Okay. Uh, just one thing. It's a really long episode, so um, yeah, you'll be pulling your teeth out grinding for if you want more than one item. But uh, anyhow, best to do it over a couple of days actually. Uh, right, moving on to the engineering consoles. This is the console that comes with the ship. Uh, Universal Subspace Chemosite Deployment. Uh, 6.7 maximum shield capacity uh, with pl plus 2% shield resonance. Summon an anomaly that launches projectiles. 180 targeting arc. Create a level 66 subspace vortex 2 kilometers from the foe. Launches a chemosite projectile each second for 10 seconds. Each chemosite projectile deals 8,828.4 radiation damage to foes in a 1 kilometer radius. Two minutes recharge. Um, I'll be honest with you, the foes don't normally last within 1 kilometer when I'm using this ship. So, um, yeah, you've got to be really hard pressed before you press this because. Um, yeah, there's not much lasts for more than a few seconds when, when you're actually in battle. But anyhow, there it is. Um, the next is the Universal Point Defense Bombardment Warhead, which is part of a two-piece set with the uh, Dynamic Power Redistributor Module. I'm also using uh, Trell MD Plating, and that's from Ragnarok. I'm also using the bio Neural Infusion Circuits, which is a lobby item. Okay, quickly moving on to the science consoles. Um, uh, I have the Domino, which is giving me 15% uh, phaser damage. Yes, I'm using disruptors, but uh, I've got this for the accuracy rating. This gives me plus 20. And 25% firing cycle haste, bonus all damage and recharge speed with 100% recharge speed for torpedoes. 
this comes from the Bajoran Interceptor, which was a pattern event ooh, some time ago. Uh, the, uh, this is a lobby item, the Tachyokinetic Converter, uh, which gives you 29.5 Starship, uh, Starship Control Expertise, 39.4 Flight Turn Rate, 1.3 Critical Chance and 13.1 Critical Severity. Another lobby item, the Universal Bounty Hunter's Friend, which gives me 39.4 Energy Damage, 29.5 Starship Shield Restoration and minus 10% Weapons Cost. Tactical consoles, I'm using the obfuscation screen, which is from my Walker Battle Cruiser, and uh, the part of the three piece set in the disco set, which I have the Locus Custom Fire Control, which is giving me 3.9 critical chance, 7.9 weapon power settings, and 157.5 Starship Shield Restoration. And finally, I'm using the Universal Enhanced Dominion Coordination Protocol which gives me 15% directed energy damage and 8% critical severity. And finally in the hangar pets, I have the Elite Zindi Primate, uh, what, how's that pronounced? Nosuti, Nosuti? Nosuti Heavy Fighters. Um, now a lot of people don't actually use these, they um, use something else, but I wanted to stay within the theme, so I just went to uh, my fleet and bought the elite version so just before we uh, get into the statistics I've just realized I've forgotten to cover the deflector impulse warp and shields uh, so the deflector uh, this is the uh, elite fleet intervention protomatter deflector which is available from your fleet colony the impulse engine is the prevailing innovated impulse engine which you can get from your competitive reputations tab uh, this is the terran task force quantum capacitor warp core which you can get from the terran reputations tab and finally from your disco reputations tab you can get the tilly shield so moving on to the uh, statistics as you can see we have a power transfer rate of 253 0.13% now you should be aiming to get this above 250 and this warp core actually does just that so if we uh, take it out and put in the disco warp core you can see the power transfer rate drops significantly to 210 um, now if we put back the Terran warp core there you go that's where we should be, which is the reason why I've actually chosen to put this warp core on. Now, moving on, um, the hull, 122,173. Shield regeneration, 453.3. Four shields, re-shields right and left, 24,682. Uh, if we move on to the resists, you should be able to get all your resists above 30%. So we're not doing too bad here. Accuracy rating, 97. Now this was actually uh, a lot less before. Um, I've actually changed out one of my consoles and I've put the Altimate Modified Swarm Processor, which has upped my accuracy rating by plus 35 and uh, plus 3.9 critical chance really good piece of kit this um, and you can acquire this from the lobby store so I would wait for a sale because most of my lobby items I try and get when there's a sale on and that gives us a critical chance of 38.3% and a critical severity of 156.1 so moving on to the stations we have a lieutenant commander universal stroke command station which I've made tactical we have a lieutenant tactical station we have a commander engineering station and we have a lieutenant engineering stroke intelligence station and we have a lieutenant science station right so let's take a look at the bridge shall we well here we are on the bridge 
And let's have a quick look. Oh, it's very small, isn't it? Oh, my word. Can you get off? No? Surprise, surprise. So, um, what's this console? Let's have a look. Oh, this is the uh, duty officer's console. Um, bank account. So you can access your bank account here. And over here we have the library files console. No chair. Hmm. It's rather odd, isn't it? Um, hang on a minute. Oops. Red alert? What's what's going on? What's going on? Did you call the red alert? No? Who, who's called the red alert? You called the... You, Mr. Potato Head. Ah, right. Mr. Potato Head. Red alert. What's going on? Are we being attacked? Romulans? Klingons? What? What is it? It's what? You spotted UFOs? UFOs? Unidentified flying objects? Well, you would do, you buffoon. We're in Earth space dock. Co computer, co cancel red alert. Can cancel red alert, computer. Yeah, yes, me, me and you are going to have to have a talk later. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, the doctor's put in a complaint about you. You know, you went to the doctor's the other day. He, he was complaining of, 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 of a pain. Yes. Well, he asked you to strip to the waist, didn't he? Yes. Well, the next time, he made your top half. You frighten the life out of the medical staff. Just, 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 anyway, carry on. We'll, we'll, we'll talk later. So, this console's a little bit small, isn't it? I mean, you'd get back here, wouldn't you? Leaning over that. I mean, I can't remember the Zindi being this small. Well, yeah, it's a very, very odd bridge, isn't it? Very odd. Um, yeah, the, con I mean, the, these look like, uh, these look like those, you know, fruit machines where you gamble. Yes, have you won anything yet? You haven't? Well, I'm not surprised. But, um, yeah, not not much really, is there, on this bridge. I mean, um, yeah, the, yeah, the screen's a little bit, um, yeah, <laughs> that's not very good, is it? Right, okay. Um, max out of ten. Yeah, I'll give it. Yeah, I think I'll give it a four. Yeah. You definitely can't get off, can you? Let's have a look. No, no, you can't. Got me eye on you. Right, okay. Right, so let's um, take her into battle, shall we? And um, let's see what she's made of. So here we are on a Borg Red Alert. I thought while we were running... These red alerts, I thought I would give it a go. Right, let's have a look, see how she performs, shall we? Well, that was one down. Unfortunately, I got caught up in the explosion, didn't I? Uh, let's move on. There we go. Let's try another one. Ooh, that went down rather quickly, didn't it? Me. Try the console and see what that does, right? Didn't do much, did it? Right, let's give these two bar cubes the good news. Certainly got through a few Borg ships there, didn't we? Right, okay, let's uh, let's head to the main event. Now. 
Let's go get this six of ten, shall we? Well, I quite like this ship. I think she's... Uh... Well, there we go. Well, didn't she do well there? Um, that was a really good run. Very quick run, wasn't it? Um, so what we'll do is we'll go back to Earth's space dock. And I just want to have a look at the other Zindi ships. Uh, and their consoles. Um, to just make a comparison for you. So, I shall see you back at Earth Space Dock, if we don't get blown up first. Well, here we are, back in Earth Space Dock, and um, yeah, just having a quick look over the uh, Zindi Primate Atleth Dreadnought, and uh, yeah, I, I really do like this design, to be honest with you. Yeah, never mind Dog Sledge or uh, Lawn Mower, I quite, I quite like this design. Um, yes, and I think she gave a very good account of herself with the Borg. I hope you uh, like that demonstration. So if you're thinking of getting one, you know exactly what uh, what she's capable of. Uh, this one cost me in the region of, I think it was three to 400 million EC, um, which at the time I think I was quite lucky to pick that up off the exchange for that price. I've since seen them up at seven, 800 million EC, which is just shocking isn't it the the inflation rates on the exchange are just shocking but um well all i can say is just keep an eye out for a, for a bargain right so here we are um these are the four zindi ships um which um you can pick up and yeah i'm not even going to try and pronounce half these words because i'm on take 12 now to be honest with you i've tried and I, i'm just yeah lost the will to live but anyway here we have the insectoid heavy strike wing escort um, the zindi aquatic dreadnought carrier the zindi reptilian escort and the zindi primate dreadnought so obviously the Zindi Primate Dreadnought has more in common with the Aquatic Dreadnought um, at level 65. Uh, they have a hull, uh, well the Aquatic has a hull of 60,750 which is exactly the same as the Zindi Primate. In comparison to the Reptilian and uh, the Insectoid ships, those two have a hull at 65 of 49,500. Um, the Zindi Reptilian ship, however, has a bonus power of plus 15 weapons power and plus 5 engine power, where the Zindi Primate Dreadnought only has a plus 5 all power levels. Whereas the Zindi Aquatic ship uh, has plus 10 weapons power and plus 10 auxiliary power. The Strike Wing Escort, the Insectoid, has plus 10 weapons power, plus 5 shield power, and plus 5 auxiliary power. So there is a fair bit of difference between these four ships. I won't go into the consoles, but I'll leave them up for you to have a look at. Um, as you can see, the I think the obviously the Insectoid and the Reptilian have five tactical consoles uh, whereas the Zindi Primate has five engineering and the Aquatic is sort of a middle range with four tactical four engineering and three science so yeah it's sort of a middle of the road type of ship is the Zindi Aquatic so moving on to the consoles the Zindi Insectoid ship uh, has a console called the Infectious Biomatter Swarm. The Aquatic, the Zindi Aquatic ship, has the Cascade Resonance um, uh, Emissions Console. The Reptilian uh, ship has the Call Zindi Weapon Platform Console. And of course, we have the Zindi Primate 
ship which has the chemocyte deployment vortex. So if you manage to get all four of these ships and you combine all of these consoles together, the set powers uh, are just down here. Uh, set two, you get experimental weaponry plus 10% impulse speed plus 100 resonance rating to inertia debuffs. Zindi weapon platform gains plus 100% hit points plus 50% defense plus 10% bonus damage. Set 3, Swarm Efficiency, effects created uh, 10 km sphere, all Zindi hangar pets within 10 km gain, plus 20% firing cycle haste for energy weapons. And set 4 is Diversification, minus 15 seconds to recharge of all Zindi console abilities whenever a Zindi console is activated. Yes, you'd, you'd think really with all four you'd get a little bit more, wouldn't you really? Um, you know, they are going to take up four console slots after all. Uh, so you would think that um, you'd, have, you'd get a little bit more bang for your buck. But um, anyway, there you go. Um, you can um, judge for yourselves whether you think it's um, value for money to purchase all of these Zindi ships. Um, well, that's if you can get them off the exchange given the... Uh, rate of exchange inflation right so just before we go um i just wanted to show you one more important thing because obviously people don't get this ship for the aesthetics of this ship or for what it can do they actually pick it up only for the trait so here is the trait and the trait is super weapon ingenuity which increases the duration of beam overload um by five seconds so there you go so um really hope you've enjoyed this review um i will try and get the other zindi ships and bring you them as as and when i get them um i'll add it to my bucket list of ships which i'm trying to get hold of um don't forget please if you're watching my channel and you haven't uh, subscribed i really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and uh, yeah drop us a like if you uh, if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far so without further ado i think i'll bid you good evening for now and uh, until next time this is jester signing off now what